Blessings, Lafayette family and Facebook friends. Welcome to Sunday Worship on August 30th. And I remind you that Sunday Worship, Sacred Music, Daily Messages, and other content are available at FountainChurchTallahassee.org. Also remember that we now have drive-up worship service every Sunday at 10 o'clock a.m. Please come and join us. And I also ask that you would remember tithes and offerings are an important aspect of Christian worship. And there is a give button on our website, and there are several other ways to support the mission and ministry of our church. We're in good financial standing because expenses have been kept low, but we do need to step up our stewardship to continue to thrive and to strive after positive and energetic mission and ministry. And now I extend the right hand of Christian fellowship to my wife Susie and a hug of peace and I turn the service over to her. Thank you and we are going to start with another virtual hug. For our joys and concerns, Pam Terry is asking for prayers for Cesar as he travels to Nicaragua. His mother, Dona Patti, is not doing well. Please pray for Jenny Vandiver, Rob's mother. Pray for Daniel, the grandson of Bob and Jackie Montgomery. And Diana Swegman continues to need our prayers. Rita Tucker will have surgery this Thursday. Please keep her in your prayers. Ken Ingham needs prayers as he travels to New York City to visit his brother. And Nancy T. Lander has asked for prayers for her husband, Tyler, and for son, Jesse. Chris Graves has asked for prayers for Guillermo Bravo, Carol Dorsey, and Narasi Lopez, all facing medical or personal issues. And Rita asks us to pray for Angela Harper and her son, Ladarius Campbell. And now join me in the call to worship. The Lord's creation is beautiful. Let us respond with praise. The Lord's presence is with us. Let us respond with obedience. The wind of the Spirit is blowing. Let us respond with joy. Let us worship the Lord. Amen. And now join me for the prayer of confession. Lord, you give us choices every day. You show us your paths, but we avoid them. We ignore oppression and injustice, but cry out when we are denied. We pass by sisters and brothers in need, but are critical of those who fail to help us. Instead, we have used your blessings to enrich ourselves. Forgive us, Lord. Refresh us and renew us. When we twist your truths or wander from your words, bring us back. Open our eyes, but more importantly, open our hearts. In your holy name we pray. Amen. The Assurance of Pardon Lord, your love sustains us. We thank you for your grace and mercy, and we kneel at your feet. We trust in you and know you hear our prayers. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Let us come before God in prayer. 
Lord, our country is suffering. We are surrounded by a cloud of pandemic. We are struggling with racial injustice and protests. We're debating whose lives matter. And we are seeking to find our way forward. Lord, our hearts go out to those affected by the fires in California, by the storms in Iowa, by the recent hurricanes and tropical storms, which are continuing to unleash suffering and damage on so many and threatening lives. Our hearts also are with those who mourn for justice, for equality, for the values upon which this great nation was founded. But Lord, we're all hurting, no matter what our political persuasion. We are in agony wondering when will we be able to embrace one another as a people, literally and figuratively. We long for the days when putting up a political sign in our front yard didn't involve neighborhood conflict. We long for the days when Congress strived to work together with the president and with each other, even when there were strong disagreements. We are not foolish enough to believe that there has never been a time such as this, but Lord, we do not welcome the division and dissension, and we look forward to the completion of an election cycle with the faint hope that it may bring new peace, new harmony, and new progress. Lord, we also pray for our church. Not only, Lord, may we be the recipients of your blessings, but Lord, may we reflect your blessings in the lives of our members and friends, our community, and by extension throughout the world. Lord, these are our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading for today comes from Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 through 25. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block for me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up the cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Before I begin my message today, I want to thank Mother Erica Takas of St. Mark's, Philadelphia, and my Bible class for their inspiration leading to this message today. God forbid it. In our scripture this morning, Jesus explains to the disciples what is going to take place. I'm going to be handed over to the authorities, and they're going to put me to death. And then, on the third day, I'll rise again. Well, the disciples didn't want to hear this. And Peter, who in last week's scripture has just been declared by Jesus to be the rock. Peter, who has just confessed Jesus to be Messiah and Lord, now moves from a foundational rock to a stumbling block. He says to Jesus, God forbid that this would happen to you. But this is not a simple rebuke grounded in selfishness or ignorance. Peter hurts for Jesus, for someone he loves. And he cannot imagine that this path which Jesus describes can possibly be in accordance with God's will. Well, we know how Peter feels. God forbid it. How many times have we uttered this phrase ourselves? God forbid that I would have to endure this pain. God forbid that I lose my job. God forbid that the results come back positive. God forbid that my loved one fall off the wagon. God forbid that I give in to temptation again. God forbid that this pandemic lasts one more day. God forbid that anyone suffers persecution because of how he or she worships or whom it is they love. God forbid it, Lord. These things must not happen. But over and over again, our fears are realized. And we find ourselves in darkness fear, and despair. We suffer, our neighbors suffer, our friends and family and loved ones suffer, our brother and sister Christians suffer, the world suffers, and God does not forbid it. And only God knows why. Perhaps it has to do with the gift of free will, or the nature of sin, or the patterns of creation, perhaps. But we are not called to guess. We are called to pray. We are called to trust. Jesus says, no. No, God will not. Forbid. God will not forbid this. All that I have spoken will come to pass. Not only will God allow me to suffer, God will live it. God will bear it. God will redeem it. Jesus says, God will not forbid me to take up this cross of shame and death. Jesus says, neither will God forbid it for you. Jesus says, God desires that you take up your own cross to deny yourself and follow me. This is the path God chooses for us even if it means suffering, persecution, and death. 
God forbid it, Lord. Oh, how we long to see the big picture. We want to know and to understand. Our faith falters, our confidence crumbles. We cry out, Lord, teach us to think more like God and less like human beings. Lord, help us to trust. My friends, hear these words. Where would we be if Jesus had backed down? What if Jesus had listened to Peter and had avoided Jerusalem altogether? Where would we be? Where would we be if any one of us were given the power to determine for the world life and death, success and failure, sickness and health, joy or sorrow. Where would we be? Where would we be without faith and hope? Where would we be without prayer? Where would we be without trusting God? Where would we be without grace? Where would we be without salvation? Where would we be if our lives were governed only by the whims of human beings, human behaviors, or human institutions? Trust in God. For every alternative, begs the question, where would we be? God forbid it. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for leading us and guiding us. We do not understand and we rail against you and we cry out so often. But we will strive through prayer and faith and hope to trust to trust that your plan has already brought us salvation by the grace of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we trust that if we walk in your paths, you will redeem us and that you will justify our trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I charge us to trust in our Lord, to realize that God's plans and purposes are blessings today and throughout eternity. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this hour and forever. Amen. God has shown us what is good. What, what does, does the Lord require of us but to seek justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with our God? Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised.